Everybody, Thomas here. Big shout out to my buddy Gary Axton. Uh, he's got a Timber King 2020. It's pretty tricked out. And he has designed something really cool. This is a felt wiper system that will easily go onto a Timber King sawmill. Very cool design with a felt pad that you can soak your diesel into or your file lube or whatever you're using. And it's quick and easy to go onto here. So I'm going to show you kind of the install of this and uh, what he sent me here. Gary, <laughs> he has modified his machine. The man has some great ideas and I love uh, getting updates from him because I know he's going to have something that's going to maximize either production or functionality of a sawmill. All right, so what he sent me in this little kit, piece of felt, this metal bracket, a grade eight bolt, which is awesome. And then uh, he's got uh, two washers, a lock washer and a nylon nut. I mean, this thing, when I put it on there, should not come off. So I'm gonna do a little close up video, a picture of what we got here. Also today, I just went to Menards and I was looking for drill bits. And I'm like, you know what? I don't wanna buy the, the cheap crap. Uh, I wanna buy something that says it's made in the USA. And I just happened to find these in there. I'm not sponsored by these or anything like that, but I just thought it was cool. Made in Montana, USA. They're a Montana brand uh, drill bits. So yeah, just wanted to give that a go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead. I gotta put a blade on here to make sure I got all my spacing out right and everything. But we're gonna show you how to install this little kit that I got from Gary. Gary, again, uh, he sent this out to me. He's like, hey, give this thing a try. Uh, he's had really good luck with it, and I think it would be a great application system to put diesel on your blade without you know, wasting a lot of diesel, as well as BioLube. Because I've got to do some videos with BioLube here. They sent me out something to try, and I'm like, okay, I'll give it a go, and we'll see how it does. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead, get this drilled out and we'll get her connected up. Okay, folks. So what I've done here is I've taken, put a blade on here. I put this on here to all the way to the back position. So the base of this is up against the back there. And then I also took the guide arm here all the way back in here and tucked it in. And I have between an inch, about an inch or so of play to keep off of this bearing, but I'm gonna keep it within an inch actually uh, half inch to quarter inch. So my spacing between the metal frame here and the side of this bearing is just under a half inch. I've already done my pilot hole there and everything, but that right there is a good location. It gives me on the back side here more than an eighth of an inch of uh, separation from the back of the blade to the metal piece right here. I would say uh, yeah, it's probably like uh, 3 16 worth of uh, separation behind there. So looks like everything's going to fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the drill. Finish drilling that hole out. I'm using a quarter inch drill. So it's going to be a tight hole. I uh, might need to open it up a little bit, but I think that'll be fine. Okay, so now we've drilled that out. Get rid of some of these metal shavings here. Because those will get in your hand. It'll be a bad day. When you get a sawmill, you have all sorts of wood scraps and everything. Now, really, I should come back and paint this up because your wood, especially if you're cutting hardwoods or anything like oak or black walnut, are very high in tannic acids, so that right there is going to rust out. But the hole's pretty tight right now. Yeah, there she goes. Alright, so that I'm happy with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and have the nut, or excuse me, the bolt come through the bottom. And I'll have to go get some tools. So, got our washer, got our piece right here. 
And the good thing is, is now that I did that, that bolt hole really tight, she'll hold in there. So I don't have to worry about uh, this other stuff. And we'll put our washer again. Followed by our lock washer. Followed by our nylon nut. And now I'm gonna go grab my toolbox for some wrenches. Get this thing going and tighten down. And then we'll give her a go. Okay. Half inch wrench and ratchet. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten her down. Try to keep it uh, square to the blade. There you have it. We'll put the felt in. Nice snug fit. And we'll adjust our little dripper thing so she will drip right onto the felt pad. So there you have it. So you've seen that side. Let me bring the camera on this side, hopefully. So there. We have a very simple system, very secure. It allows for the blade to remain off of it. And I think that's gonna work. Let's go ahead and do a, uh, an engagement of the blade. Well, first off, let me start dripping some diesel onto that. Okay, so we've got diesel dripping onto that. Let's soak into that felt. Oh yeah. Let me slow it down now. So this right here will really save on the amount of diesel fuel used. <laughs> Very excited about this. All right, so let's go ahead Put up some tools here. I'll have the camera kind of in this area here and we'll do a blade engagement. But give me a second to get my tools put up. Okay, so this next part right here is for Mr. Floyd. He was asking about, hey, how does she start up in cold weather? I have not cranked this sawmill since last Monday when my bu buddy Randy from Iron Ridge, Wisconsin was up here. But uh, it has been below freezing every single day. We have not had highs out of the freezing temperatures. All I'm going to do is turn it to the on position, hold the glow plug for, I don't know, let's say 10 seconds. Okay. Cranked up. First time. Now she's going to spit and sputter here for a second. There you go. Has not cranked up in over a week. And again, or right out of week, excuse me. And it's uh, currently 20 degrees and falling like a rock. <laughs> so we're gonna let her warm up just for a little bit. And then we're gonna look at what it looks like with a blade engagement and see what happens to that felt. I am very excited about this. Still gotta slow down my drip just a little bit. That should be good. Yeah, that's about one drip per five seconds right now. That should be sufficient as long as that felt pad remains soaked. And as you see, we have a very, very slow drip, but I can assure you that felt pad is fully saturated with diesel. I have it pretty close to the felt pad to minimize atomization. Uh, it should not, you know, go from there anywhere else. It's going to go right onto that felt pad. That felt pad will lubricate that fan uh, as it goes around. So here we go.
Well, I think that looks pretty good. Now you can see my guide wheels were not turning that fast because that grease in there is really cold. And I don't like to run a real long time at the high speed until I've got those, uh, those bearings warmed up. Um, again, with the cold temperatures, it may take some time, but they'll start spinning at full speed once they get warmed up. But I count that as a win. I think she was running good. And we're gonna take a look at that felt and kind of see what it looks like. Okay, folks, there it is, fully saturated. Very minimal, minimal, if anything, on there. I mean, there's a little bit of sawdust on there, but that's about it. It looks good. And this is a very dense belt. And with that diesel in there, I think it's going to last a long, long time. I was also told by Gary that, uh, I think he said it was a scotch Bright or something like that. You can get the auto parts store. will also work in there um, as a uh, substitute for the large felt like this. But yeah, tomorrow we're going to try this out with the log and see how she performs when we're actually cutting something. Alright folks, turned out beautiful. The logs, it's so weird again dealing with frozen sawdust because it like literally sticks to the wood more so than other times. Uh, cut quality still looks great. Uh, I have no complaint there. That's about uh, standard cut quality and everything. Um, even through these harder knot sections, you did have a little bit of blade chatter here, but uh, you know, there's ice right there in the wood. But yeah, it's uh, cutting very well. Uh, very happy with the blade. Now, on to the wiper system. As you see, we are still getting, sorry, dang sunlight here. We are still getting buildup on the wheel. And I actually have a great idea. What I'm gonna do is, I say great idea. I'm gonna get another piece of felt and put it over there. Now, I think there is another solution I can do. This right here, it's only pressing down on it uh, based on how tight it is in this block. If it had some spring tension to it, then I think it would do a little bit better job at wiping, but at the same time, everything is kind of freezing to everything. So, I mean, it's lightly on there, and these are starting to warm up, so maybe it's it's not frozen, but it is still sticking there. In the beginning, it was definitely freezing to it, so we, I got an idea. Stay tuned. All right, folks, this is actually a couple days after I installed the wiper system, and I got some time to think about what I was going to do. First things first, I want to talk about this giant log on here. This is a frozen white pine log. It's the largest white pine I've cut, and actually I'll probably do a separate video on that. But again, we are still testing the blade from Mr. Joe Main, the four-degree blade. I mean, <laughs> we got ice chunks everywhere off this thing. So let me show you what I came up with. I have felt, and the felt that I used was actually the felt that I'm using on my sawmill building here to prevent the least amount of blowing snow and stuff like that from that direction. So I cut off a small piece of felt there and pretty much I just arrange it right here. This felt right here is so dense, I used two inch and a half long screws, drilled it into there. As the blade goes this direction here, this guide wheel is going to spin like this. And as you can see, it's already working. What that's gonna do is it's gonna cause this right here to wipe off the debris here. And since it is turning this way, the buildup of debris should come off of this side, I'm thinking. Now, if I don't like that, if I don't want too much buildup going this direction, I could also, now this is very thick, but I could also flex that down. If I flex that down, it'll do the same thing It'll wipe the blade or the, uh, excuse me, the guide roll and everything, but then I'll get a sawdust buildup right here. So I think the best location is in that orientation right there. Because as she turns, sawdust should fly over this, and oil, or excuse me, fuel, my diesel fuel, will still drip onto this. Through capillary suction, it will go all throughout this uh, material right here. It'll also put diesel onto my guide roller, 
which should limit the amount of buildup that's on the guide roll. This still, it will migrate through into the felt below and we'll still have a blade that is lubricated. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and test this out tomorrow because we are losing light. I wanna make sure I get some good shots of this spinning while this is working as I'm cutting through. So we're gonna wait till tomorrow. But again, this is my proposed addition to this to prevent the amount of buildup we're getting here. Folks, I'm very happy with what this is doing. So as you can see, I've got it dripping pretty fast right there, but nothing is building up on the wheel. The felt is doing quite well. Sawdust is going over as we thought it would. And it's kind of collecting on this side. So still some tweaking, but for, especially for frozen type of sawdust or anything, this is actually working very well. So yeah, happy with it. I think that'll work. I need to look on my phone now to see what dimensions I have to cut this. Now this is a frozen pine log. Frozen. See all the ice and stuff in there? <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. But anyways, uh, as we cut this, it's just looking great. Very happy with this look. Nice straight. Oh, I should also talk about cut quality. Again, I'm using that four degree blade. And unfortunately we don't have really good light, but uh, it looks great. All right, so let me look at my phone, see what I actually have to cut this up for the customer and everything. But this is a 20 foot, 12 by 14 right now is what I think it is. All right, folks, please like, subscribe. I gotta cut away to the next video. And uh, yeah, I think this is gonna work, work out great. Next thing I'll be doing, uh, I'll, before I cut away, next thing I'm gonna be doing is using the bio lube in my tank up here instead of diesel. So we're gonna give that a try. All right, we'll see you around, thanks.